Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is another I didn't expect video and this one is to do with the facial feminization surgery I had done a couple of years ago. So I um, can't believe I had this done two years ago, it doesn't feel that long, but um, yeah, I went to Spain and um, basically had some major, major surgery. It um, The surgery was about 15 hours, so it's pretty full on, and they literally cut you from here to here and then rip your face off, and, <laughs> and then they work on the bone to make you look less like a male, more like a female. But some of the things that ha um, happened after I wasn't quite expecting. So I've got a list um, here of things I had to write down. I don't normally write things down for my videos. They're very um, ad-libbed, but in this one, I just wanted to make sure I got everything out there. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at my list. First thing, how long it took to see results. So for me, I was expecting to see results. I know I wouldn't, wasn't going to see them straight after surgery, but I was expecting to see something within a month or two, maybe six months at a push. It took me two years to see the final results. So right to this day, I'm still seeing minor changes in my face after two years of having this surgery. So that is something I absolutely did not expect. Um, so that's quite amazing to me that it took that long. I look back at videos of myself not long ago, like only a year ago, six months ago, and I look like a completely different person. So if you've had FFS, just hang in there. It does take a long time, longer than the surgeons tell you. They say it takes six months to a year, but it actually takes two years. That's what it took me. So anyway, another thing I didn't expect was numb teeth. So I had um, surgery on my chin um, where they went through my mouth and cut it in the middle and cut it underneath and brought it in to make a more kind of V shape. To do that, they had to cut some nerves. So they have to come come through your mouth. That's <laughs> so they have to do the incision through your mouth under here. And when they cut those nerves, the nerves do grow back, but I had no feeling in my lower teeth um, for about, in fact, I still have cut some limited feeling there. I, I, yeah, it was pretty bad for about a year, a year and a half, and um, it felt like I had plastic teeth, like when I'm eating, it was like someone else's teeth were in my mouth. It was the weirdest thing. I did get a bit worried that it meant that they were going to die, but I did some research and it's all good, and it's quite normal to lose some feeling somewhere on your face after facial surgery. So you might have a numb like side of your face, or you might have my problem where your lower teeth are a little bit numb, um, but the feeling does come back. So what else? Not passing, I've got that written down. <laughs> I thought after facial surgery I would pass 100%. I did not, and um, but it helped. I think the process of healing, because I was so swollen, because what the swelling can do is actually make masculine traits that you have even more masculine. So my jaw was really big for quite a few months. So I actually think I looked more masculine for a while. And it's only now after this couple of years of healing that I'm starting to pass, like I'd say I pass about 98% of the time. Um, what I don't, I think that the kind of people that clock me are people that know about trans and they know what to look for and they're looking for it otherwise I'm perfectly fine so what else have I got swelling I've written that down I've already spoken about that um, the swelling I expected after surgery but I didn't expect it to last around the bone for 
months, even a year um, and a half of swelling and it just comes down so slowly, like half a millimeter by half a millimeter each month and then you look at a photo from a year ago and you suddenly go, wow, look how big my jaw looks or look how weird it looks when I'm talking. So yeah, anyway, um, not extreme enough. I've written, I've written not extreme enough. So I probably mean, I thought I was going to look more extreme, like more, like less like myself. And I kind of don't mind looking less like myself. So yeah, I actually would not have minded waking up after surgery and looking like a totally different person. I probably would have freaked out, but I would have loved it at the same time. But the uh, 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 FFS is not going to make you look like a completely different person, probably unless you go to a bad surgeon who fucks your face up. But generally you look like yourself, but the female version. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, depression, yes, I got depression, but that came mainly from how long it took to heal immediately after surgery. So I was stuck in my hotel room for 10 days on my own and it can start getting depressing. And then when you get back to your own home, you're bruised, you look like a mess and you can't wear makeup. And so your dysphoria can start kicking in and you know there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but it kind of doesn't help. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, um, depression, I don't know why I, uh, it just seems so a lot, it just, it seemed like really, it just seemed so logical to me to be like depressed when I knew I was going to heal, but my brain was not kind of computing that. It was just thinking this is forever. I'm never going to heal. And you just get kind of a bit rational when you're, when you're healing. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but it doesn't last. You will get over it and eventually you see positive results. The bruising goes and you can wear makeup and go back to being a girl and you get happy again. So that was good. Um, uh, the trip home. Okay. So I had, um, I had my surgery in Spain. I live in New Zealand. Yeah. The trip home was awful. I live in New Zealand, which is um, basically the asshole of the world, we're right at the bottom. And I went to Spain, which took about, it was a 24 hour flight almost. Um, and that is not good. Like <laughs> that sucked. So if you live near your surgeon, good on you, but a long flight, it's so freaking draining on top of the surgery. So yeah. I didn't expect to be so drained when I got home. I slept for two days. Um, okay, so expectations of other people as well. It suddenly like dawned on me that, oh my God, I'm like gonna have to reveal myself to my work colleagues and family. They're gonna have some expectations of what I might look like. So that only hit me on the flight home. I was like, can I just say, I'm like having to look back at some of this video how easy it is to your for <laughs> how easy it is for your voice to just slip back into kind of a gravelly low pitch and you might notice in some of my videos that my voice is high and some passable and in this particular one it sounds quite i think gravelly and masculine so you have to really focus on your voice all the time and um so i'm going to focus on it and bring it back to what it should be hopefully uh, okay, so what's the next thing? Um, yeah, the expectations of others is, yeah, that sucks. So it's just super awkward. I'm not a people person really. I guess I'm just a bit awkward and having to like open the door and go to work and have that attention just is not my thing. So I didn't really enjoy that. Um, I'm actually in the middle of a kind of hair crisis. I've got um i don't know what to do with it anymore i've got this funny little bit here i've got this at the back i don't know whether to do it in a ponytail or not i'm gonna probably get it cut maybe that much off we're right off topic um yeah so the expectations is awkward and on the flip side of that is not getting any comments so i actually didn't get um 
any positive comments or any one like none from family or friends not one person asked me about surgery or how it went and not one person said wow I can really see a difference or wow I can't believe you did that what a you know amazing thing you've done there was nothing it was crickets it was silence I found that actually probably the most weirdest thing of this whole thing because I I was gone for like 15 days and I had a major surgery and nobody asked me about it when I got home and I found that I don't even know what to think of it to this day like are they my friends are they my family like <laughs> It's so awkward. Um, I haven't. I, c I can't say I've got the most supportive family. Like they're like whatever, do what you want. We don't care, kind of thing, which is good, but not so good. So when you've got a family that's like, we don't care, just do whatever you want. Don't ruin our lives. Um, we don't care what you do. If you transition, we whatever doesn't matter. Doesn't affect us. It's not exactly support. So it's not surprising they didn't want to know anything about my surgery either. Uh, yeah, so that was weird. Didn't expect that. What else? Um, yeah, so I had a panic attack uh, just before the surgery. That was so unexpected because um, I was like so happy to get this done and then just before they uh, like they had me all my surgery gear and I just my blood pressure started dropping I started sweating my whole body got wet I was basically having a panic attack and I couldn't control it I was losing feeling in my hands and my feet so they were trying to fix the problem by raising my hands and feet um, and I just said can you uh, inject me with something just make me feel good so the anesthetist uh, just injected me and I was fine it was amazing how quickly it kicked in I just felt really good and then after the surgery I had another panic attack when I um, woke up and I just had this kind of weird um, I don't know how to explain it kind of true madness like what actual insanity must feel like I did not want to sit down I did not want to stand I didn't want to anything everything was just the opposite of what I you know I just it was madness like I did not know how to deal with being in my own skin I just felt like I don't need, I don't even know how to describe it it's not a feeling I ever want to have again and I think it was a reaction to the anesthetic and it lasted about 24 hours so that was really disturbing for me uh, so and I was crying and I was emotional um, I wanted someone to hug me, I wanted someone to hold my hand, I didn't have anyone with me so I actually just grabbed the nurse's hand and wanted her to stay with me and she could tell I was not, I was disturbed and having a bad time so she got the therapist or psychiatrist which they have on hand to come in and speak to me but I actually didn't want her, I wanted the nurse because she was more motherly, so weird and bizarre. Um, but the psychiatrist said this will pass in 24 hours it's just the drugs that's weird so that's my video i think it's quite interesting to reflect on the facial feminization surgery journey it's been a couple of years and i think it was completely the right thing for me to do um, the next thing will be my voice and then srs and boobs but i think the voice will be probably the most um, interesting surgery because I do believe that you can be masculine looking but if you have a very feminine voice that is completely female you just for some reason in a person's brain are a female it just does some weird things so I've seen a person on TV who I thought was a man and then they talked and it was a female and um, I just thought oh yeah that's that's a female but if that female spoke with a slightly androgynous voice or masculine, I would think that's a male. So the, the voice is the big thing next. I've literally got no chin in my videos, but 
before I go I will let you know where I went I went to the facial team in Spain the cost was about 38,000 New Zealand dollars and it was mainly chin and jaw work and brow bone work um, not my nose and I know that a lot of trans can't afford to get facial feminization surgery but there is a clinic in India and I've seen their results and I think they're really good called Premed, which is spelled P-R-Y-M-E-D. They have some of the best surgeons in India and one of the best um, hospitals in India that all the Bollywood stars go to. So it's pretty damn amazing. And I am planning on going there to get some more work done. Um, and they are far more um, cost effective to get a top result um, if you're wanting uh, FFS. Okay guys, I will leave my video there and I will see you in my next one. Bye!